Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I would like to tell you a story today of a chain of inspiration. For example, this is a sea urchin ornament, uh, a longtime favorite of wood turners, uh, and of course I've made a few myself. This one is uh, derived from uh, Max Brosi's bat form, and I saw this at a Raleigh symposium a couple years ago now. But then my wife seeing this one and knowing about these suggested that I scale it down to make it into a Christmas ornament so that led to this one which is which I call the faux sea urchin because it is somewhat similar to the sea urchin shell then in uh, then another viewer saw this ornament and said why not make a pumpkin with a similar process so that's that and then between that and one that showed up in last year's ornament challenge, why not an ornament that uses a similar process? So all of these are actually cousins. They're quite related inspirationally. So with that in mind, for this turning today, I will make this one. But I'm going not going to put a finial on it. I'm going to let it stand on its own. But then remind you of a great source of inspiration, and that is the Christmas Ornament Challenge, which is now in progress. And I'm really pleased with the results so far. Uh, but one thing that's really fantastic about it is the diversity of inspiration that comes in that challenge. And I love to see it, and I trust that you will too. Meanwhile, let's see a little bit more of your creations and how you put together different things in different ways to make it your ornament for the challenge. So I'll turn this one now, but let's see yours in the challenge. I have mounted a small piece of walnut left over from a previous project. With one end already trimmed, it is ready for the simple measures for the perfect sphere. I am following the octagon method to get going. So I measure the diameter and multiply it by 0.414 for the length of the octagon's side and multiply by 0.293 for the distance from the corner of the cylinder to the corner of the octagon. Then lay out the measures from the wood's corner. When that is laid out, I set the caliper for the side length and lay it out on the top of the live center end of the cylinder. By the way, I never touch dividers or calipers to spinning wood. That way is way too dangerous for me. Instead, I mark approximately with calipers, hand spin the wood to make a complete circle, then measure again to see which way to adjust. Much safer than getting a divider in my face. Then reduce the other end to a tenon size to the octagon's side. Then move on to cut the first 45 degree octagon side, then the second 45 degree side. These are both cut from the corner mark on the cylinder to the corner mark on one end and the tenon on the other end. Then divide each side in half and divide again before clipping the corners into a, a octadecagon. Finally, round off by eye. If you haven't watched my other woody videos on perfect spheres, please do so. At this point, I'm deviating from the perfect sphere process since I do not need it perfect for this project. Now I need my face plates, but not for the perfection process. But this time I need to index the sphere. So I have mounted my cup face plate into my chuck. I'm using the indexing on the chuck to mark 12 intervals on the sphere. With that done, I rotate the sphere so that the marks I just made horizontally are now running vertically. Using my pencil as a guide, I am aligning the marks on the opposite side and the nub end nubs from the original turning. A few adjustments are required, always trying to move half the distance from the pencil. Now I can cut a shallow groove and flare out the sides. This first one is easiest. The only thing of concern is the nubs at top and bottom, but they are soon gone. Then sand since I may never get back to the same mount. Then some shellac friction polish. Mm -hmm. 
Now to a line for the second set of marks. The second is not too bad. The top and bottom nubs are gone. This will be more critical on future rotations since I will always want to cross at the same top and bottom points. Then cut, sand, and finish. Now the third set, same thing, three more after this. Then problem develops with that previous grooves. It is a little more difficult to seat the sphere, but still very doable. On to the fourth set. As I sand and finish, the finish extends out towards the next groove. It looks like I will not have to do any more finishing after the last groove. And the fifth, tool control is essential since the surface is interrupted by the crossing grooves. The grooves are not perfectly uniform. However, this gives it a great organic feel. Definitely not machine made plastic. Finally, the sixth set. After this, I buff the ornament to blend the finished sections together. I have decided not to turn a finial. Instead, I will beef up the hanger wire from what I typically use. I'm measuring off 6 inches of brass and silver colored 22 gauge wire. Laying the strands together, I clamp it together a little from the middle, smooth out the wire and clamp it from my, on the other side. Then twist the wire together in a tight twist. That looks great. Then wrap the twisted section around a mandrel and clamp the four loose ends. This time, I twist the four strands into a tight twist. Looks like I could have used less wire. Then clip it off to the depth of the hole in my ornament. The fit is tight to the hole with a little CA, if I can control it, the hanger will never separate. This completes this ornament. It is a close cousin to the pumpkin that I made a couple of weeks ago, but it's much easier. It is also closely related to my faux sea urchin ornament. It is a great application of the octagon method for a sphere and multi-axis turning. Being able to turn a sphere without a jig has opened a lot of possibilities. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, please wear your full face shield for safety. Anytime the way that's running. It is your last line of defense. I will see you next week with another wood turning video.